Okay. Yeah, all right, hi, I'm Chris Monheit. This is Stranger in a Strange Land, next to edition. Uh, so basically we're going to touch on five key aspects of in college trip into Mexico, which was working hard, playing hard, the people who we ran into throughout the country, disaster, and ultimately our success as a team. Let's get going. So first off, the work we were doing. I think like it's fair to say we've already heard about half the work because for the Mexico crew, we were really broken down by the end of it into two sections. Because there's a number of job opportunities there, but half the people, or a little over half of them, ended up doing the environmental work that Leo was talking about. The rest of us, which is basically myself, Jake Polishuk, and Herbie Lewis, and eventually cast him out about halfway through his switched projects, decided to work with disadvantaged children or disabled children in the community and in their schooling. So a lot of our Days were spent assisting teachers setting up classrooms and preparing lesson plans. And it was a really interesting experience because you go in to search for a gap of that. And actually, some of the greatest successes that we'll talk about later came from that, where we started to see real growth in the kids. Um, but more on that later. The second half of the time course was after working hard, playing hard. So we had a, some pretty amazing opportunities while we were in Mexico to go a couple places. Some of the most amazing sites there, uh, the wonderful world, Chichen Itza was, I don't want to say just down the road from us because it was kind of an all day investment to go out there, but we did, we made our way out a few times to a couple different Mayan ruins um, that were in the area, and they were absolutely incredible to see. Um, it was really amazing to learn about this culture that exists on there. They never really used the wheel the way we did, like for carts and whatnot. All these stones were moved by hand, probably by slaves, as empires tend to use at the time. But these were all built you know, without even what we consider to be basic medieval technology. So it really goes to show the ingenuity and the power of like, the culture that were there at the time. And that still shows there today, because unlike a lot of uh, culture in the United States where Native Americans are kind of squished down, Mayans are still recognized. Mayan language is still not widely spoken, but it is still generally like, heard. And some Mayan languages learn while we were there. Um, also, we had a chance to travel to Cozumel, an island off the coast of Mexico. So there were some great opportunities there for a bit more typical resort um, experiences, just to give the entire play a try. Some of the people we met there, so we ran into a number of other people working at uh, Ugalong, which was the other sort of volunteer organization at our hostel. We weren't staying with them, we were staying in a hostel. This is Charlotte and Tom, and they're both uh, some of my from Britain. Um, they were really cool volunteers to get along with. Um, and then the people who I'd say like made the largest impact, at least in my time there, or at least here, Josefa Costa and Evan Ross. Um, he actually was a salsa teacher who would just volunteer his services in the community to like bring art and culture to the people who were traveling to Mexico. Because he saw hostels and hotels as like the first line of communication with the outside world for Mexico in a lot of ways. If you'd like to like bring that kind of face forward when he was dancing and stuff, he was absolutely amazing. We're still in contact with him actually. Everything that we know about salsa we learned later. She was a traveler who came through and like really brought life with her. So, um, I was going to show you a clip which included essentially us crashing a car and having to recover from that 20, mile, 20 kilometers outside the nearest Mexican city in the middle of the wilderness. But we were uh, kind of unable to access the video. Sorry about that. Basically, what happened was while we were traveling between uh, Tulum and San Marco, uh, we blew a wheel out. We were stuck out there in the middle of the dark for a better part of the night, actually. And so we were able to get the we were just driving down the road, we ended up flagging down for help and kind of trying to communicate with them and see how I go for Spanish. This is Rodrigo Aguilan, who we stopped, got out of the car, and actually helped us search our entire car over for a fifth time to find a tire, a spare tire. So we could not find a spare anywhere, and apparently it was lodged up under the engine block, which is a strange place to put a tire. That was a lot of fun. These are a Swedish family we went into who was willing to try and help us get in contact with the outside world because there was no internet connection out there. So, special thanks to all of them. Finally, yeah, the general success of our operation. Um, as a group, like we came together with different mindsets, different backgrounds in a lot of ways, and we really kind of went through the five stages of grief. There were times that was not easy to live together, but by the end, like I really feel we were one of the most tight-knit crews I've ever like, had the experience to be with, and uh, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, that said, my boy Joe. <laughs>